guess I'm going to speak now. The video is not quite working. So <laughs> get this rolling. First off, I just really want to thank everybody for coming out tonight. And, uh, you know, I have to admit, when they asked me if, if we could do this, I was just wondering if anybody was going to show up. Because <laughs> honestly, you know, usually at these, there's seven or eight other people going in. And, uh, you know, everybody gets up and speaks for a few minutes, and, and they go from there. And uh, But I, I just I can't thank the Arkansas Sports Hall of Fame enough for you know, first off, nominating me and then selecting me. Uh, it means a lot. I don't want to talk about it too much. I don't want to get emotional already. But uh, just thank you. Thank you very much. Um, you know, I need to say, uh, I need to say a lot of thank yous tonight, and you'll see that. But I, I want to thank all my family, my friends for traveling up here. Who knew it was going to snow? Uh, the weather's not great. You know, had people coming in from four and five hours away. And you know, I just appreciate that effort. Uh, I want to thank, uh, obviously, uh, Coach O'Brien, Dave Jorn, Carson Shaddy for coming up here and speaking about me a little bit. And, you know, it's not easy speaking. you got to prepare it. you got to think about it. You stress out a little bit about it. You go on and on. And I know what you guys go through there, and uh, I just appreciate you guys a lot. Uh, you know, tonight, for me, it's, it's just a night to say thank you. And uh, I may be up here a while if you're okay with it. So uh, I'm going to tell a few stories. Thanks. I'm going to tell a few stories, uh, you know, recognize a few people, and uh, probably say a lot of thank you. So I'm going to start with Carson Shaddy over here. You know, he spoke on me, so you know what? I'm going to speak on him. <laughs> so, you know, I first met Carson in the summer. I think it was summer of 2002. And we had just moved back here, and our kids were getting ready to go to grade school over at Vandegrift. So we were going over there early in, in August, and I think it's Meet the Teacher Night. And uh, I don't even really even need to read this because I I remember it like it was yesterday. And we're in the hall, and uh, and there there's Holland, his mom, recognized her, and you know there's little old Carson with her, and uh, she introduced me to him, and and he still looks just the same. He's got this big old grin on his face, same old guy, uh, you know, and the amazing thing, it's just like everything came around, you know, we know Holland, uh, you know, I played middle infield with, with, with Chris Shaddy, uh, Carson's dad, he was just a great shortstop and had an incredible arm, if he would have had Carson's bat, he'd still be playing in the big leagues, but he didn't, sorry Chris, just giving you a hard time, man, <laughs> just like the old days, man, you never forget and you just get on him a little bit, but so I, I, knew his, I knew his dad, you know, I had known his mom as young people, and, and then you take it a step farther, you know, Karen and I, you know, we loved Holland's name. And so we go off, you know, time goes on, we have our first baby. I think we were going to name both of, our, both of our children Sarah both times, and it fell through. We ended up with a, with a, with a Holland and a Mariel. I don't know why, but anyway, the, the name Holland was because we really liked Carson's mom's name, and we just took the D off of it, pretty much the same name, and, you know, a few years, you know, fast forward, who knows how many years, this guy's winning ball games for the old man up here, you know, it's, it's pretty amazing, so, uh, you know, I almost messed up and didn't recruit Carson, uh, you know, it was interesting, it was Carson's senior year at Fayetteville High, and he, uh, he had already committed to a junior college and got a scholarship and had signed with them, and you know, I was following Fayetteville High, and he was doing awfully well. He wasn't real big. He was trying to be a catcher. He doesn't look like an SEC catcher at the time. We got big old guys, and, you know, I, I couldn't get my mind around, but I knew everybody was telling me how good a player he is. I need to go see him. So I decided, gosh, it was late. It might have been May of his senior year, and they're playing up at Bentonville High, I think on a Tuesday night or weeknight. It was a little bit chilly, and I go up there, and they play a doubleheader. The first game he catches does a great job. Second game, he plays center field. Kind of a weird combination. Basically just told me athlete. Guy can play anywhere. It told me he was a baseball player. And he hit. He did everything you'd want to see a guy do. Uh, fast forward maybe a few days, and I call him. And uh, just said, hey, Carson, you know, 
I'm going to tell you this, but I want you to think about it for a couple of weeks. I know you've already signed a scholarship to a junior college, but, you know, if, if you want to come to Arkansas, I'm inviting you to come as a, as a walk-on, and you'll have an opportunity to earn a scholarship. And, uh, but I said, I want you to take a couple of weeks, think about it. <laughs> he said, Coach, I'm coming to Arkansas. I don't need a couple of weeks. Oh, <laughs> uh, it was awesome. And... Uh, so then I was a little nervous, you know, how are the parents going to feel about it? And, you know, kids giving up a scholarship, and he earned a scholarship. He earned every bit of it. I'll guarantee you that. And, uh, you know, during his time with us, and I know this has been mentioned a little bit, Carson played every position on the field except shortstop, first base, and pitcher. He could play anywhere. He did a great job. And a lot of people don't realize this. He did, it, he did all of that with a... Uh, pretty much a, a completely torn elbow for a couple years there. Uh, you know, he had an opportunity to, and he didn't complain. I mean, he didn't even know. I mean, he tears his elbow, and he comes in, and at the end of the season, he said, yeah, my arm bothered me a little bit, and we went to Omaha, and I think 15, and he got the catch, and he was trying to throw the ball that way, and it went that way, so I thought something was going on. And, uh, but he came in, he was getting ready to go play summer ball. He's going to get a lot of at-bats, and he said, my arm's bothered me. I said, well, let's, well, let's get that looked at before you go. And he got in there, and he was devastated. It was torn completely in half. And, uh, but like I said, he never complained. Um, had some great years for us, incredible big hits. He single-handedly whipped up on South Carolina for us in the early series. I think he carried us in that doubleheader. They couldn't get him out, and uh, it was awfully cold that day, but it didn't bother him because he was playing for the University of Arkansas, and it didn't matter. Uh, but, you know, Carson just recently, he, he retired from pro ball, went out last summer, elbows back to bothering him, doesn't want to have surgery. So I want to make this comment. He gonna, he's going to be a great employee. If anybody's looking for somebody, that's the guy right there. And he could probably sell anything. So I would uh, get a hold of him. I needed to mention that. But, you know, Carson played the game the right way, man. The guy played it hard, and he played it with a smile on his face. And, I just appreciate you being a Razorback. I think we had a good time. You know, the, the next man I want to mention is just a few more thank yous, and I'm still just getting started, so be patient with me. I need to thank Frank Broyles. You know, Frank Broyles for hiring me. And, uh, you know, I will never forget the look on Frank's fa face during my interview. We were standing out there. Uh, you know, on Bomb Stadium Concourse, and he kind of asked me a few questions. I think he might have thrown out, what else do you need to come here? And the look on his face when I said, uh, we, we need to put some more seats in the stadium. And this is what he said. Why? <laughs> I'm not going to try to imitate anybody else the rest of the night. He said, Why? We have 3,300 chair back seats, and we only average 1,800 a game. And I just turned and said to him and said, Coach, we're going to need them. And he did it. And for that, I thank him. And uh, it ended up being a pretty good move. And, uh, but I just appreciate Coach giving me an opportunity to come back and his vision. So a uh, big thank you to him. Bunch more thank yous, and then I'm going to move on to somebody else. You know, I also want to thank all of our administration over the years. It's been pretty amazing. You know, sometimes, sometimes you go in your places, and they don't want to do anything, or they don't want to give you anything, or, you know, the, the season started and your budget's set, and all of a sudden something comes up, and you go ask. Some places, they don't work with you. The University of Arkansas worked has, has been working with us. And uh, I just appreciate their support over the years. Administration's been amazing. You know, Hunter Yerchak, he's only been here a little over a year now. I knew from the very first time that I talked with him that he was all about the coaches, the kids, and he was all about baseball. And it was exciting to be around him. I just appreciate him and the support through the first year and his vision with this new facility. Uh, he's all in, and he's, he's, he's done a tremendous job, and I really appreciate that. And then, you know, Kevin Trainer over here, Kevin is the, he knows everything about everything when it comes to the University of Arkansas Athletic Department. And it's, he's amazing. And he's been with, yeah, I mean, that's, that's good. 
I mean, I'm not even sure what his title is anymore. There's, he's just, it just keeps climbing up, but uh, just, just amazing. And he's been our, he's been, he's been like the baseball guy. He's our associate AD for baseball. And I don't even know if that's the correct title now. All I know, if I have an issue, I'll call Kevin. If we need something, we'll get a hold of Kevin. And if Kevin's got a problem with me, he gets a hold of me. So, uh, but that's what he's supposed to do. And, and he's done a tremendous job. And I just, I really appreciate it, Kevin. So, uh, you guys don't, don't laugh at me when I say this, because I really mean this. I really appreciate our media. The media has been so good to Arkansas baseball. And you guys have really been good to me. And you could have you got me pretty good in 16. And you left me alone, and I appreciate it. You gave me a mulligan. And, uh, you know, it was good. I don't even play golf. I think that means you get a free shot. Whatever. I don't have time, OK? Um, but I really do appreciate the coverage and the respect. and. Uh, I'm going to leave it right there, so I don't, you guys are going to think I'm getting out of control. So uh, I, want to, I want to thank our academic staff. I mean, Britta DeLay has been back like three years now, and all we do is just keep climbing the ladder academically. The last two or three years have been the best probably since I've been here, and, uh, and it's not an easy job because you got these guys. Don't worry about them. It's these guys down here, and she gets after those guys. So I appreciate Britta. And, all, the, all that's helped us over the years. And, you know, I, I really, the fans, the fans, the fans make Arkansas baseball special because it's different. And you have to go to the games. If you'd have went to Omaha, you'd know exactly what I'm talking about. But the fans make our program special and they make Bomb Stadium special. Because I tell kids all the time, when I'm recruiting them is what makes Bomb Stadium so special is all the people that are here. I said, you can go around the country and there's some brand new 60 and $70 million facilities and people just keep adding and adding and adding. But you know what? They don't have anything on us. Their weather may be a little warmer or whatever, but you know, our fans have, have just been incredible and, and, and I really appreciate that. And uh, I don't know. Uh, it's just, it's been super fun to be the coach, I'll, I'll tell you that. Um, so enough of saying thank you for now. I'm going to move on, and I'm going to talk about Dave Jorn, that guy right there. So, uh, you know, Dave, I've known Dave since he was 29 years old, somewhere in there. And, you know, Dave was a groomsman in my wedding. How about that? I tell you, he's in my wedding. So... I've known him for a long time. I have a lot of good stories on Dave because we were both single at the time, but I'm not going to do that to either of us. Uh, but I can tell you this, and I've been around a lot of baseball people. I think it's already been talked about a little bit, but Dave is a great baseball coach. He has a great baseball mind. Honestly, we could sit in the dugout. Dave, it's like Dave knew what the other coaches were thinking. I mean, I can't tell you how many times he made me look good because we pitched out on a hit and run, and people are probably going, man, Coach Van Orde made a really nice call right there. Uh-uh, that guy did right there. He had a feel. He had big-time feel, and, you know. Oh, by the way, Dave has a – he got a little attitude, you know. I don't know if anybody ever knew that, but Dave had an attitude when he pitched. And I never got to see him pitch, but I talked to a lot of people that did, and he had a nasty slider. And, you know, he, Dave pitched all the way. Well, let me just give you a quick break. He, out of high school, he went to a junior college. He was a shortstop. He couldn't hit it out of the infield. So he became a pitcher because he had a really good arm. And then he developed a slider, and he already had that attitude. You know that attitude. See that look? That's that attitude right there. Well, Dave, he climbs. He goes to junior college, then he goes to southeast Missouri State pitching, gets drafted by the Cardinals, and he shoots through the minor leagues, and he's in AAA. And I truly believe this. If he didn't hurt that elbow, he'd have pitched in the big leagues, no doubt about it. And sometimes, you know, that's, that's what life does to you. It kind of kicks you in the gut and says, no, you're going to go do it some way else, and, and Dave handled it. But uh, that attitude, let's move on to that attitude again. So every day... You know, Dave and I are the coach, the young guys, and we throw batting practice every day. And I'll talk about the routine a little bit. You know, we get down there at a certain time, and kids would come early. We throw batting practice. Well, I'm an infielder. I get on top of the ball. I throw the ball straight. Dave, he's a pitcher. He wants to get people out. 
That's not a good thing when you're throwing batting practice. Okay? So Dave, so the, the, the players loved hitting off me. I threw it straight. I could locate it, and I made him look good. Dave, he threw it with cut and sink and then laughed at him. <laughs> well, one day, one day we're, we're, we're taking BP, and I've already thrown, now Dave's out there, and they hated hitting off Dave. Well, they would be around the cage, and they're fouling balls off their shins and different things, and Dave's kind of snarling at him and laughing at him, get back in there, you know, that type of stuff. Well, one of the guys was popping off talking about Dave, and Dave saw it. So, so Dave walks down, you know, off the platform, comes around, and he spells his name. This is what he does. He says, it's J-O-R-N, Jorn with a hard J. <laughs> well, little did Dave know that was his new nickname, Hard J. That's a true story. So for the rest of the time, he was known not to his face. That's hard, Jay. All right, last story on Dave real quick. This story, you had to almost be there to believe it, to see it, because I was there. You know, back in the 80s, we took a bus everywhere. We were in the Southwest Conference. And so Dave and I roomed on the road together. Uh, so we drive, we take the bus from Fayetteville to Austin, Texas. That's a long trip. They check in the hotel. We go practice on their field that night. So we're exhausted, bottom line. We're tired. Well, it's probably one or two in the morning. So I don't even have to look at this sheet. I don't know why he wrote it up. I'm still having nightmares about it. Well, anyway, so Jorn, Jorn's asleep. He's in the bed next to me. I'm over there. He's not in the bed with me. He's in the bed next over there. He's asleep, he's asleep, I'm almost asleep. You know, you're just in a day. As a matter of fact, I don't even know if we had remotes on TVs then, but it might have been on, you know. I'm like, and all of a sudden, Dave Jorn sits up in his bed like a madman and yells, let him know we're here. <laughs> and I'm like, startled, kind of freaked out. And he just sits there. And so I'm just kind of laying there, kind of like, what's... And he's, and he's sitting there, and I'm telling you, it had to be seven or eight seconds, and then he just slowly laid back down. And then, and then I can't sleep, because I'm messed up now. I, I knew exactly what Dave Jorn meant. He meant throw it right under his chin. Because that was his attitude. He was dreaming. Somebody was getting after the pitchers, and he said, let them know we're here. And it was, it was amazing. I got a bunch of stories. I just don't have time. But, uh, you know, over the years, we, we've been friends. We got, got him to come back here, and he did an incredible job with our staffs, and I didn't have to worry about him. I always tell our coaches, I don't micromanage you. You're good at what you do. They pay you good. Go do it. And we just make sure everybody does their job. And he did his job every, every year, and I, I just really appreciate it. I appreciate, you know, all he's done for me, for my family, and for the baseball program. Thank you, Dave. Thank you, Dave. <laughs> uh, we'll go through a few more thank yous, and, and then we'll move on to the next guy. Um, you know, you know, a lot of people don't talk about it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go through these pretty quick, but, you know, I want to thank our grounds crews over the years. Think about how beautiful Bomb Stadium is, and think about the fluctuation of the temperatures here and the weather. I mean, we practiced on the field today. I don't know why, but we did. And, uh, and then it snowed on us. We thought, well, this isn't real smart. Maybe we ought to get off. Uh, but, you know, Jeff Fors, our, our groundskeeper now, he does a great job. We've had a bunch of them. Um, and, and I just really appreciate what the groundskeepers do. You know, head, our head equipment guy, Mark Taylor, he's been here forever. Mark works incredibly hard. He handles all the uniforms. He handles the other team's uniforms, all of our equipment. I tell all the new players, you better be nice to Mark or you won't get anything uh, because he's the one who's got the key to the shed, okay? And that's where the Nike stuff is. So, uh, 
he, he does a great job. Sometimes, like I said, he's up till 4 and 5 in the morning. We're playing somebody else. He's taking care of everybody's stuff. And I just appreciate Mark and all he's done over the years. And then all the managers. You know, we have all these managers running around. A lot of the teams do. Our managers, they're students, and they're not really getting a whole lot. They're getting experience to get to be around the guys. These guys set up the field. Uh, they hit fungo if they can. Some can't. Uh, they catch bullpens if they can. Sometimes it's dangerous. Um, our guys throw pretty hard. So, uh, I mean, I could go on and on, but I just appreciate all the managers and all they do. And then, you know, I, I got I to gotta, I gotta talk about old Clay Goodwin, you know, our director of operations. You know, Clay, Clay played for me. Uh, I didn't recruit him. I inherited him. But, no, Clay was a good player, man. Really field, accurate arm. Could, had a little power from the left side and the right side. He's a switch hitter. Couldn't run out of sight in a week. He was slow, man. <laughs> but uh, he's a good player. I mean, he's smart. I could see that he was smart. When he graduated, you know, we had some things pop open. Finally, we got, we got that position. And to me, it was a slam dunk. That's the guy I wanted. He knew the program. He knew me. He's, he's, he's done a tremendous job. And he's... I don't know how long he's been our ops guy now, probably 10, 11, 12 years. I'm not sure, but, uh, you know, I, I just appreciate Clay. And then, you know, my, my administrative assistant, Kelly Moore, this is, she's been my assistant for 16 years now. And <laughs> you know, she just, t she takes a lot of pressure off me. I just call her, hey, can you, hey, I'll move on. And that, that, that's awesome for me. And, you know, Kelly started, well, Kelly started working for me three kids ago, so things change. But, uh, you know, I used to appreciate everything she's done over the years. And we've been able to add a video person with Zach Barr, and that's been good for two years now. And, you know, getting a little scouting report, getting ahead. It's, it's really amazing where baseball, the game's gone now, especially with everybody on TV. There's really no secrets. Like, you worry as a coach, you've got to change your signs every now and then because they can evaluate. They can get you on, on, on a video and just keep working it. They might figure out when you're going to hit and run or when you're going to pitch out. And, you know, we're, we're, we're starting to get, get there with that. So I really appreciate that. And then, I, you know, I've got more thank yous. But I'm going to – got to thank our trainers. Over the years, we've had good trainers. But the trainer we have now, Corey Wood, he's the best. And he keeps them on the field, man, because you know what? we got to keep the good players on the field, let me just tell you, because that's tough without them. And, and Corey works hard, does a great job. We've had him. Gosh, probably 10 years now. I'm not sure exactly. Uh, time goes, goes by pretty good. So I just appreciate everything Corey's done. And then, and, and then all the coaches. I mean, I've had so many great coaches, strength coaches. You know, Blaine Kinsley is the second year. He's done a tremendous job. I got, I've had volunteer coaches that, you know, I hate that. that and, and, and I don't use the word hate, but I do not like the word volunteer because they're working their rear off. They're just not getting paid yet. They pay, we have to pay them through camp and different things. I've had some really good V coaches, okay? I've really had some good coaches. Uh, student coaches, those are our student coaches. What does that mean? That means that uh, they were a former player. And they're either in their five-year five window, they've got to graduate, they've already, they're, they're finishing their degree, they can coach. Or guys that go out into pro ball haven't finished their degree yet, they can come back. And we've had some tremendous ones. I mean, we haven't even announced a couple of our guys that we had in the fall have already left and got jobs professional baseball uh, I mean I'm really happy for those guys but those student coaches are doing a great job all the great pitching coaches I mean I've had great pitching coaches I haven't had to have very many and that's a good thing and uh, just appreciate all they've done over the years and all, obviously the offensive coaches uh, hitting coaches I remember one time it came out in the paper that we got a new batting coach that's not the way it said we have hitting coaches and you know they teach hitting and uh, and I appreciate the job they've done. And then there's a couple of them out and about. Head coaches now, i got a new one that's done a great job. And uh, I think any successful person, whatever you're doing, you know you're not going to get it done unless you have a bunch of really good people around you. And I've been very fortunate for that, and I just really appreciate, appreciate all that. So with that being said, um, I need to talk about the next guy. And... It's my former head coach and my friend, Norm DeBryant. So hold on to your seat, because here we go. I'll tell you what, 
before I get going on, Nora, I need to tell you a little bit about where I come from so you, you could relate to these stories. So as a couple of times been brought up, you know, I, I grew up in Kansas City, Missouri. All I wanted to do was be a Razorback. My senior year, I had a good senior year, and that's when you recruited kids when they were seniors for the most time. I visited the University of Missouri. I visited the University of Kansas. I visited other schools. I didn't want to go to those schools. I wanted to come to Arkansas. I don't know why. I think it was the hog. It might have been the Orange Bowl in 70. I don't know what it was. I wanted to come to Arkansas. So when it didn't happen, I thought, you know, I'm not going to settle. I'm going to go to Texas and play junior college baseball where it's warm and I'm going to get better. And I went to a really good junior college. We went to the Junior College World Series both years I was there. Uh, had a really good freshman year. Got off to a horrible start my sophomore year, and then had a really good finish. Um, I had visited almost, well, I had visited a lot of the Southwest Conference schools. I had an opportunity to go to most of them, um, but that's not what I wanted to do. Finally, in May of my sophomore year uh, at, at McLennan Community College, I got the call. And it went like this, so I'm in the shower. And everybody on my team knows I want to go to Arkansas. My roommate opens the door and says, hey, there's a Doug Clark from Arkansas on the phone. And who knows how I said it, being 19 and a half. Shut up. Whatever. <laughs> Get out of here. You're just messing with me, bottom line. But it really was Doug Clark. And uh, we had a good conversation. Um, I was excited. And he said we were going to work on some things. And... You know, we'd talk again. So a few days later, a few days later, and Norm's going to hate me for telling this one. A few days later, I get a I get a I get a letter in the mail from Arkansas. It's got the hog in the left corner, and it says Van Horn. I open it up, and it says, "Dear Van." I'm hey, and the weird thing is, I still wanted to go to Arkansas. <laughs> I don't know what it was, but uh, so, I don't know, a week later, we're talking on the phone, and the Razorbacks are getting ready to come down and play in the Southwest Conference Tournament. It's the end of the year. We're getting ready to go to the playoffs or go to, I don't know if we'd qualified for Grand Junction. That's where the World Series was, and so we set up a meeting and they're going to come down on I-35 through Waco. Well, McLennan's in Waco. Baylor's right off the highway. McLennan's down the road. And uh, so we're going to set up this meeting. So we said, uh, I, I drive over to McDonald's. And I'm waiting in my car. And here comes the big bus. Pulls in. Uh, they stop. And there's some guy. Th the bus knows why they're there. They know uh, we're stopping here at McDonald's because we're going to meet this guy that they're recruiting, and I can just see it. And one guy, I get out, and the guy leans his head out the window and goes, you don't want to come here. <laughs> and I'm going, okay, whatever. And I'm thinking, you know, he's my age. He's goofy. You know, boys, we never grow up. Whatever. So no big deal. I go in. We sit down at a booth. The whole team's scattered around me. I mean, I can feel them all. You know, they've already had their hamburger or whatever they did, and they're all around me, and they want to see what goes on. What's going to happen here? We're talking, and uh, here they come, man. Here comes all the scholarship papers. They lay them out on the table, and I didn't sign them. And uh, talking to Norm about it later, he, he, he made the comment, I thought we blew it. I thought you were done. We freaked you out. You're, you're out of here. And that wasn't it. I had made a commitment to my coach. We're, we're at the end of the year. If I would have already committed a month or two early, it wouldn't have been a problem. We're in the playoffs. I, so we go to the playoffs. We come in third in the country. We end our season. I, uh, I go to Fayetteville on a visit, and I signed. I mean, it was to be. All that we went through, it was to be. And uh, so, that, so that's, that's, I don't know. I look back on it, and uh, it was kind of crazy. And uh, that's not the only Norm story. That was kind of a program story. I think, you know, back then it was a little difficult because you had – you had coaches, and they didn't have a lot of help. And uh, so things could get messed up, like they forget your first name or they don't know who you are. And you just got <laughs> to fight through it a little bit mentally. Um,
couple more things about Norm. Uh, you know, Norm, Norm was really dangerous when he had a fungal bat in his hand. Does everybody know what a fungo bat is? It's a skinny bat that you hit ground balls and fly balls with. Coaches use them because you can use them all day and you don't get worn out. Well, Norm was dangerous with it. Um, so I'm going to just kind of tell you this one. It was the spring of 82. It's my junior year. The weather's bad. We didn't have any indoor facilities to work at. We had the Broil Center. So just envision the Broil Center. Some people know what I'm talking about, but downstairs you had a turf area that football linemen worked out. They punted balls into the baseball net. Well, we took ground balls and we could actually set up an infield down there. But there was like a mezzanine area up top. You walked around, you walked up, your mezzanine, you walked down. And all up on that mezzanine were these really pretty pictures of the football team. And there was probably a window, maybe as big as a screen to hit it in between, not even that much. Well, Frank Broyles used to walk all the time, exercise all the time, and he's walking. He's lapping. Well, infielders, we're not doing a very good job, and Norm calls us all up, and he's hitting his ground balls. We're turning double plays and thinking it's not going real good. He calls up. He gets after a little bit. Well, now Norm is going to see how hard he can hit them at us. Well, he's hitting some lasers, but he was trying to hit one to our shortstop, Chris Shaddy, and he caught the bottom of it, and that ball took off hot. Frank Broles is right there walking, and that ball went right between. It shattered the picture right in front of Frank Broles. He yells at Norm, and Norm's eyes got this big. <laughs> and us being 20 years old, we thought it was funny. The old coach got in trouble by the old coach. That was awesome. And uh, I don't know if Norm remembers that. I know if that would have happened to me, I would have been, I never would have forgot. You remember that one? Yeah, he shook his head a little bit, but uh, uh, okay, so we're going to fast forward. Now I'm coaching. So now I'm coaching with, with Norm, and Norm got two phone calls one morning on the same kid, freshman, and uh, skipping class, flunking class, whatever. He got two calls. Norm is not happy. So practice has it. Official practice hasn't started yet, but Norm and I are hitting ground balls. He's hitting to the second baseman side. I'm into short, and we're on Razorback Road. See, roaming down, basically where the uh, practice football fields are now. That's where our ballpark was. Well, he's he's not hot. He's he's not happy, and he's hot at this kid. Well, he's hitting the ground, and all of a sudden he looks over, and here he comes walking south. The guy. We'll just call him freshman. Here comes a freshman. Norm hits a ground ball. He starts getting after him. We, you know, blah, blah, blah. I won't go into it. Hits another ground ball. He's getting into it again. About that time, the kid's about to come in the gate. Well, Norm is all over him now about all the things he's, you know. Norm starts moving that way. Now, he's got a fungo in his hand. And the kid, and all of a sudden, he just stops. And the kid's backtracking. And Norm, all of a sudden, just starts running after him. The kid ran up the hill, Norm chasing him. With a fungo in his hand. So, he didn't catch him. Kid never came back. That was it. I th that was that. Um, so, you know, I waited a while, but kind of being the smart aleck that I am, I asked Norm, I said, hey, Norm, what would you have done if you'd have caught him? And he gave me this classic look and just kind of groaned. And I'll never forget it. Uh, but I'll tell you what, uh, it was fun. Every day was fun. A um, couple more, and I'll be nice. Let's, uh, let's go to this one. This was, uh, this was amazing. Norm, Norm might know this one's coming. It was the spring of 1988. It's, I am the graduate assistant. The graduate assistant, you know what that means? You're not getting paid. That's what it means. And you're going to work, and you're going to learn, and you're not going to get paid. Um, I'm the graduate assistant. This is, this is what I did every day. I got up. And so I just got married like four months before. We live right across the street from the baseball field. Like, seriously, I could walk and be at the baseball field in one minute. So I get up, I go to class, and every morning I would come to the office 1030, 1045, somewhere in there. Stay, hang out with Dave talk to whoever, do whatever we need, they needed me to do. And then we'd head to the field, and uh, 
we, Dave and I would fix the field. It was turf, but we had dirt boxes. We would rake it and water it. We took a lot of pride in it. It was pretty good. Then the guys would start coming down, and uh, we'd hit ground balls or throw early BP or whatever. So that's what I would do. Then we'd have regular practice, and I'd go home 6, 6.30 whenever practice ended. Well, I knew, you know, Norm, he usually goes back to the office for a little while. Well, one day, when I got down there, 10.30 or so, I remember Coach Jordan said, hey, Norm's looking for you. He's not in a real good mood. And I said, great. And about that time I hear, Van Horn, get in here. I'm like, oh, Lord, what happened? He sits me down, wants to know where I'm at. And I said, Coach, like every day, I'm, I can't even look at him. See, I keep going over here and dodging. That's why I wanted him up here. He says, where you been? I said, I've been in class like every day. And I come down here and he goes, well, you're not doing a very good job. <laughs> well, that was like kicking me in the gut. I mean, I was, thought I was, and uh, so, you know, I don't say anything. I bite my lip. 27 years old. I'm a big boy. I can take it. And uh, I go down the field, and I'm fuming. I'm fuming the whole practice. Practice is over. I walk across the street, go home, Karen's in there, told her what happened, and then I sat there for a minute. We talked, and I said, I'm going up to talk to him. So I drive up the hill. I knock on his door. I said, hey, coach, can I talk to you for a minute? He says, sure, come on in. You know, what he does at night, he's returning all his phone calls. You know, we didn't have cell phones. He, he had a part-time secretary, maybe. He would go up there and return calls till 10 o'clock. Well, he's in there, and I knocked on the door, and I said, hey, you know, earlier today you, you told me I wasn't doing a very good job, and I need you to explain to me why you, why you feel that way. He just shook his head. He goes, <laughs> man. I don't know why I said that. You're doing a great job. <laughs> Are you kidding? I, I didn't know what to say. I just kind of shook my head, and I said, I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> he just ha I just caught him at the wrong time, and, uh, you know, that's the way it is. It's a tough job. There's a lot going on, recruiting, trying to get better, trying to figure out how to beat the Longhorns. There was all kinds of stuff going on back then, so... You know, Norm, you didn't know this was going to turn into a Norm DeBrian roast, did you? <laughs> well, I'm going, to, I'm, going to, I'm going to flip it a little bit right here and kind of tell you a couple of things that maybe really gives you an idea what Norm's all about. In, in, in 1987, we went to a regional in Huntsville, Alabama, and it was at a neutral site. It was at a pro ball park. And back then, there were six teams in the regional. If you won the regional, you went to Omaha. Um, and I'll never forget it, uh, you know, we weren't supposed to win that regional. You know, there was Clemson was there, Auburn, West Virginia, uh, Seton Hall, and Middle Tennessee. And, yeah, I had to look that up again. I knew Clemson was there, and I knew a couple others were there, but I wanted to tell you who all was there. When we win the first couple of games, we played Clemson in the big game. And I'll get back to that in a second. But before that, so Norm says, hey, you want to go with me to the uh, pre-tournament press conference? And none, none of the other coaches went. I said, yeah, I want to go. So this is like my third year, and, uh, and again, this is my opinion, and I put that on there because there's some good coaches there, but in my opinion, I, they, I listened to them all talk. I thought some of, the co uh, some of the coaches were very boastful, very even arrogant, and a little cocky. When, when Norm got up there, I felt like he was very informative about his team. I thought he was very humble, very thankful, and complimentary of his team. And I've really never told him this, but Norm DeBryan showed me how to handle a press conference, and I appreciate that. That was awesome. So, and by the way, we won that regional, and we went to Omaha. So uh, that's what Norm DeBryan's all about. So. Hey, just a couple more here. You know, you know shortly after I got released, uh, Norm gave me a call, and, and I'll never forget this. He, he said, hey, Dave, time goes by really fast. You, you, need to, you need to get your degree. Whether you come back here, you need to get your degree. And uh, I always thought about that. Well, I, obviously, I did finish my, my degree. I mean, time does go by so fast. And I can tell you this, over the past 30 years, I've, I've probably used that same line in some form to kids a you know, hundred times. And every time I say it, I think about Norm DeBryan. And it's pretty cool. So I wanted you to know that, Norm. Thank you very much. Um, you know, nobody cares about Arkansas baseball more than Norm DeBryan. 
And obviously, he's made me a better coach, a better person. And I can tell you this, uh, he paved the way for all of us. We got beautiful bomb stadium because of Norman O'Brien. When he started out, they played at the fairgrounds. Other teams laughed at him. So he, he's the man in my eyes. So I just really appreciate Norm, and I just uh, want to say thank you, Norm. So. Okay. You know, I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't say it a whole lot in public, but I, honestly, uh, you know, in just a second, uh, I want to I thank my wife and my kids, and I'll talk about that in a second, but, you know, I'd probably get mad at myself. I, I really, I, I need to thank the Lord above for, for, for putting me in this position uh, to work with young men and, and hopefully be a positive influence in some way. You know, sometimes what they get from me at first, it's, it's coaches, he's not very nice. Because, you know, we get a lot, of, a lot of kids out of high school and those kids were the best player on their team and nobody's ever really gotten on them. And then all of a sudden they're here and they're not playing and they're mad at me and they're mad at him. And, uh, but the ones that get over it and move on and realize it's, if you're the best player, I'm going to play you. I want to win more than you, okay? <laughs> but my point being, I hope I've helped a lot of kids over the years, and I just feel, you know, very privileged, you know, to have been put here. Because to me, I don't see it as a job. It's a way of life to me. It's just a way of life, and I appreciate that. So with that being said, uh, you know, we got a little something that uh, – put together, uh, maybe because I probably wouldn't be able to get through it if I tried to speak. So, are you ready? So, we got a little video here. The next person I want to thank is, is my wife, Karen. Uh, the funny thing was, it took me almost two years of asking to get her to go out on a date with me. Um, talking to her later about it, I think she thought that I was just kind of a cocky baseball player and she didn't want to deal with it. But uh, you know, we've made it. Uh, we've been married 31 years now. Uh, the first 10 years of, of marriage, uh, I only moved her five to five different cities. Uh, within those cities, uh, nine moves. You know, when you, when you take a job and you move, basically uh, you head to a rental house, and some of them weren't real pretty. But, uh, you know, we moved from Fayetteville, Arkansas, as a young married couple to Dallas, Texas for a couple of months to Texarkana, Texas. Uh, from, from Texarkana, went to Warrensburg, Missouri. Uh, from Warrensburg, Missouri, went to Natchitoches, Louisiana. And, you know, from, from Natchitoches, Louisiana, we went to Lincoln, Nebraska. And uh, everywhere we went, she didn't complain. Um, you know, she had to give up a lot. Uh, you know, she's, sometimes I wonder why she married me. I was 27 years old. Um, I was the graduate assistant on the baseball team, and so basically what graduate assistant means, it means you're not getting paid. Um, she was just about to finish up with her architect degree, architecture degree, uh, ex ex extremely tough degree. Uh, you know, I've always said she's a lot smarter than me, but uh, being the, the recruiter uh, that I am, somehow I, uh, I got her to marry me. So. Uh, I just appreciate all that she's done uh, for us, our family, over the years. And I think back uh, to those moves, um, you know, just about everywhere we were, she gave up a job that she had working at Texarkana College. She had a job with, with uh, construction companies, doing a lot of drawing. Um, you know, we, we moved to uh, Warrensburg, Missouri. She gives up her job there. When we moved to Natchitoches, when we... Uh, you know, she gets another great job uh, along the way having babies. And, uh, and, and uh, a lot of people don't realize what goes on behind the scenes. You know, I can tell you that everywhere we were, I would leave early. I, I got the job at, uh, you know, at Central Missouri State, um, and I got it at Christmas time. And, you know, we just, we had a brand new baby, Holland, our first baby. Uh, and so I move up there to a rental house and she's never seen the place. And so she brings a, a two-month-old up, and uh, it was, uh, 
I just wanted to see the look on her face because there was no place to live. I had no options, to be honest with you. Uh, picture a uh, three-bedroom house um, with red shag carpet in one bedroom, orange shag carpet in another bedroom, who knows what color in another bedroom. And it wasn't, uh, it wasn't really, uh, it didn't smell too good. Let's just be perfectly honest. It was brutal. And when she got there, she didn't complain. Uh, she didn't smile a whole lot for a while, but uh, we had a great season. Uh, ended up winning the national championship, uh, won 50 plus games. So that made it, made it good. You know, we, we left uh, Warrensburg, Missouri. I was very fortunate to get the job at uh, Northwestern State um, in Natchitoches, Louisiana. So we all got to leave at the same time, got to reunite with uh, one of my best friends, Rob Childress and his wife, Amanda, and Karen was friends with Amanda. And, uh, you know, we, we, we spent three and a half great years there, won a couple of championships. Uh, Karen worked for the university. Uh, but here we go again, you know, uh, interviewed for the Nebraska job in uh, early January. Um, we have, Karen had just had Mariel, our second daughter. Uh, so we had uh, about a four week old and I can remember the interview.